One thing slavery and colonialism did to damage the image of the African was to popularize the idea that prior to European domination, blacks had no writing systems of their own. This was a lie, and it was a pretty easy lie to peddle if, as you were peddling it, you could march through Africa with impunity, looting and burning down everything that could possibly embarrass or show up your lie. But it's high time to tell the children the truth, which is, well actually some of the oldest writing systems in the world are African, with many of these even predating the English script, which itself is not indigenous to England, but is derived from the much older Roman Latin script. In an article by Molly Callahan for Boston University, the story of a Mr. Falu Ungum of Senegal is told to us. Mr. Ungum had always thought his father, who couldn't read or write French, was illiterate. Ungum had also believed the colonial propaganda that West Africa historically had no culture of writing prior to colonization. All this was until he stumbled on a box of his father's possessions shortly after he passed away. In the box were letters and notes in a script that looked Arabic, but wasn't quite. On further investigation, Ngom unearthed medical prescriptions, poems, contracts, titles, deeds and much more written in this strange script. Ungom dug deeper, and what he discovered was nothing short of amazing. West Africans, using Arabic as a base, had created a new script and adapted it to their various languages. This script was known as Ajami, meaning foreign or non-Arabic. What Falu Ungom had rediscovered was a hidden writing system used all over West Africa and beyond, even as far as the Swahili nation in Kenya and all well before European colonization. How? Well, probably with the help of the massive Mali Empire, which controlled areas that are now part of Senegal, Gambia, Burkina Faso, and other modern West African nations. Incredibly, the earliest known surviving Ajami text is from a tomb carving dated from the 11th century in the city of Gao, that's a mere 300 years off the English script's development from Latin. So although Ungum's father couldn't read or write French, he was well briefed in the ancient writing of Ajami. Now even though Mr. Ungum was literate in Arabic himself, he couldn't quite read Ajami like his father could. Why? Well, just in the same way the Latin alphabet has been adopted to write English, adding new letters, dots, crosses and so on, Africans had adapted the Arabic script with enough tweaks here and there to make the language almost entirely unreadable even to someone literate in Arabic. So why was all of this unknown to Ungom and many Africans living today? Well, this is where things get even juicier. You see, during the period of colonial rule in Africa, white administrators came across the Ajami script and couldn't make head or tail of it as it wasn't quite Arabic and it certainly wasn't Western. So what did they do? Well, the same thing know-it-alls do when they come across something they don't quite understand. They rubbished it as mumbo-jumbo. Burn it all, Browning. Burn it all up. A savage nonsense. That type of thing. But in reality, the colonial powers probably knew they weren't looking at African mumbo jumbo. How can we guess this? Well, they banned the script wherever they found it and ordered it replaced by the Latin alphabet. The French, according to Jennifer Yanko of Boston University, quote, were very suspicious of this writing they couldn't read. A lot of libraries were burned, so the local people got wise and began hiding books within double walls of their mud brick houses or they hid them in caves." End quote. Now why would you need to burn down libraries if you thought they only contained useless mumbo jumbo? But every cloud, as they say, has a silver lining, because something mildly good did come out of the suppression of Ajami. Resistance groups who were literate in the writing form now effectively had a secret way to communicate with each other. And that is exactly what the Muride resistance movement of Senegal did. With the help of the near-forgotten script of Ajami, the movement thrived and was a constant source of frustration to the French right up until Senegalese independence. So what's happened to Ajami since going underground and becoming an almost lost script? Well, it's still in use, believe it or not. Aramco World says on their website that, quote, Today, many of West Africa's unlettered are still reading Ajami on signs in shops in at least one weekly newspaper, Nigeria's Al-Fijer, as well as in locally published books that range from romance novels to religious texts, end quote. 
Largely though, it remains a forgotten script. A proof of a job well done by people with a vested interest in causing the African to forget his history. George Orwell once said, the most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. Whether you're black, white or yellow, black history just like European or Chinese history is world history, human history. Time to regain our history folks. Help us do this at Trill Black by subscribing to us for more content and by hitting that like button. Still, you and I know that unless you're playing video games or up to some other time-wasting nonsense on YouTube, the algorithm alone doesn't help pay the bills. But you can by buying us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash trillblack. With as little as the price of a cup of coffee once a month or just once even, never mind once a month, you can make a difference to helping us unearth the hidden gems of black history. If you'd like to buy us a coffee, the link is in the description below, along with all the sources used for the research in this video. You've been listening to Trill Black, repping black right, no doubt.